Welcome to the adventure of Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia, A Journey into Knowledge. This guided tour will introduce you to this powerful, comprehensive, and easy-to-use multimedia universe of information. This is the encyclopedia's main screen, or the Tableau screen. It has three windows or viewers, the Find viewer at the upper left, the Article viewer at the right, and the Multimedia viewer at the lower left. The Find viewer gives you a variety of ways to search for items in Compton's storehouse of information. In the Article viewer, you will see the text of articles, along with the icons and cross-references that lead to related multimedia and other articles. When you see colored hypertext links or icons in an article, click on them to activate them. If the icons are multimedia icons, such as a camera or a slide projector, the multimedia will appear in the multimedia viewer. If you encounter a word you don't understand, double-click on it and the dictionary will automatically appear with a definition. The multimedia viewer can display pictures, videos, slideshows, animations, sounds, charts, tables, and graphs, and the interactive atlas. The buttons immediately below the viewer control display or playback of the item. Each viewer has a menu, activated by clicking on the title bar. The options on the menu change depending upon what is displayed in the viewer. You can do such things as print the current item, copy text, and link to other items in the encyclopedia. Select Go to Full Screen in any viewer menu, or click on the Full Screen icon at the right edge of the title bar to enlarge the window to fill the entire screen. Select Go to Small Screen, or click again to return to the small view of this screen. The control bar, which runs across the top of the screen, gives you access to Compton's wide variety of tools and features. Use Find to access options that help you find information in the encyclopedia. You can see an alphabetical listing of the encyclopedia's content, or search for specific titles, words, or topics. You can also retrieve items you've bookmarked and go back to any item you opened in your recent exploration of the encyclopedia. Use Back to display the last item or screen you were looking at in the encyclopedia. Use Atlas to explore Earth and learn about the many places on the planet. When the cursor changes to a magnifying glass, click on that location on a map to zoom in for a close-up view. When the cursor changes to a page, click on the place name to see an article about that place. Use Timeline to discover facts about important events, people, eras, and trends throughout world history. Historical information is organized by topic and shown on the timeline as pictures, icons, text, and error bars. Click on a timeline element to link to related information in the encyclopedia. Use Internet to connect to the Internet and get updates to the encyclopedia, view a list of relevant local resources, or check out a library of hundreds of newspapers and magazines. In the deluxe version, you can ask Compton's research team for help with research questions. You can also browse an offline internet directory of website descriptions and link to a site by clicking on its title. And you can access Compton's website for educational activities, technical support, and information on other Compton's products. Use Special to explore the special features of Compton's interactive encyclopedia. You can visit four thematic explore environments for facts and fun, or create your own multimedia shows with text and graphics. Windows 95 users can visit a planetarium and learn about the night sky, and play the StarQuest astronomy game. You can also see an informative picture tour and article about recent events, learn about notable birthdays or events that occurred on a specific date in history, and research answers to fascinating questions. You can even take a picture tour related to a topic, or browse through all the pictures in the encyclopedia. Use tools to maximize your use of Compton's interactive encyclopedia. From here, you can access a dictionary or thesaurus, open your favorite word processor, use the program's notebook to take notes, and change the layout of the viewers. Windows 95 users can also create a shortcut icon on the desktop in order to return to a specific screen. Use Print to print text and graphics. A dialog box lets you choose to print one of the items currently displayed. Use Help to view a guided tour of the program, access help topics, set program preferences, and see a list of people who created the program, copyright, and trademark information. Use Exit to exit the program.
This is just a brief introduction to the many features of Compton's interactive encyclopedia. Now go, explore, and enjoy. The adventure is yours. Welcome to the adventure of Compton's interactive encyclopedia. A Welcome to the adventure of Compton's interactive encyclopedia, a journey into knowledge. Welcome to the
Madcap Music is open for business. And the store has gone to the birds, literally. You can join them. Listen for surprises. Each bird sings different songs. Each time you click the instruments, you'll hear a different sound. Strike the percussion, bow a violin, pluck the guitars. Browse around the store, drop a quarter into the jukebox, or check out the music slideshows at the theater. But don't stop there. Explore the world map and the orchestra poster. Go wild. You might even find a hidden mosquito. It's all part of madcap music.
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. 
I've earned everything I've got. Hello. That I welcome this kind of. Hello. <laughs>
Welcome to the adventure of Compton's interactive encyclopedia, A Journey into Knowledge. For sheer magnificence of sound, no listening experience rivals hearing a live symphony orchestra. Sometimes numbering 100 musicians, the symphony orchestra seems an almost casual sprawl of various instruments. However, these instruments divide into four very distinct sounding families, the strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. String instruments produce sound by drawing a bow of horsehair across strings suspended over an exquisitely crafted wooden body. In the orchestra, the strings far outnumber the other instruments and play the most often. They include two different sections of violins, a section of violas, a section of cellos, and a section of double basses. The woodwinds provide delicate color in the orchestra. They are played by blowing through a mouthpiece, which resonates air inside a tube. 
The primary woodwinds are flute, oboe, clarinet, and bassoon. Much music also features their interesting cousins, the piccolo, English horn, E-flat and bass clarinet, and contrabassoon. The brass add power and energy to the orchestra. Brass players blow through a mouthpiece that resonates air in coiled metal tubes that fan out in a bell. The brass instruments are the trumpet, French horn, trombone, and tuba. Percussion instruments add spice to the orchestra, emphasizing rhythm and exotic effects by striking various materials together. The timpani, the bass drum, and the cymbals form the core of orchestral percussion. In an elaborate sonic dance, the orchestra balances and blends the four families of instruments to produce an infinite rainbow of tone colors. Listen, for instance, to Beethoven, alternating the woodwinds and strings. By dynamically changing the orchestration, a composer makes the orchestra come alive. Welcome to the Compton's Newsroom. People, places, problems, and progress. These are just some of the aspects of the news. There's a wide world out there, and there's always something to discover. Explore your world through the newsroom. If what you find isn't today's news, then maybe it's still news to you. Click on the object for news. Click again for the news update. Over to you. Abraham Lincoln's first home was a one-room log cabin with a dirt floor. His final home was the White House. Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, is remembered for freeing the slaves and preserving the unity of the United States following the American Civil War. He personifies the American ideal that being born into poverty should be no deterrent to success. Lincoln is immortalized as much for his character as his deeds. 
Bishop Simpson, giving Lincoln's funeral oration, explained why people revered Lincoln. They saw in him a man who they believed would do what is right, regardless of all consequences. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev's campaign of perestroika and the loosening of the Soviet Union's grip on its European satellites led to widespread political unrest and eventually caused the domino-like fall of communist rule throughout Eastern Europe. The opening of the Berlin Wall in November 1989 was the climax of this largely peaceful march to freedom, and it symbolized the end of the Cold War. The resignation of the East German government and reunification of Germany in 1990 was the final step that ended an era. The 45-year Cold War was over. Before the arrival of Europeans in South America in the 16th century, native populations such as the Inca had already developed elaborate civilizations. South America has diverse landscapes, from spectacular waterfalls to the lush Amazon rainforest. Lake Titicaca, also in the Andes, is the world's highest large lake. The Galapagos Islands are home to unique animal species, such as the red-footed booby and the giant tortoise. Other animals characteristic of South America are the giant anaconda and the llama. The economies of most South American countries are not well developed. Agriculture, fishing, lumbering, and mining account for the overwhelming majority of jobs. Some areas, however, are more highly developed with modern industries and cosmopolitan cities. The third largest continent, North America, extends from Canada in the north through the republics of Central America and the Caribbean in the south. The continent features many distinct landscapes, including soaring mountains, dense rainforests, fertile plains, vast deserts, and important rivers, such as the Great Mississippi. Economic development varies widely across North America. While there is much material wealth in large countries, such as the United States and Canada, Mexico and much of Central America and the Caribbean are far less prosperous. North America was settled by Indians who arrived from Asia by way of the Bering Land Bridge between 50,000 and 15,000 years ago. They established civilizations across the continent before being devastated by the arrival of European settlers after 1492. An ice sheet containing 90% of the world's ice and 70% of the world's fresh water covers nearly all of Antarctica. It is a cold and forbidding land that has no permanent human population and is almost devoid of animal and plant life. In addition to a few plant species, the only animals that live in Antarctica are sea animals, including several species of seal. The continent is also home to large numbers of seabirds, including penguins, the largest of which is the emperor penguin. The most important single member of the Antarctic food chain is the krill. Krill eat small marine plants and animals, and in turn are eaten in great numbers by squid, birds, seals, and whales. The only human population in Antarctica consists of teams of scientists from around the world who operate research stations there. One problem they are studying is the seasonal hole or thinning in the protective ozone layer over Antarctica.
Welcome to the Compton Skyship. Our mission, to travel through our solar system, collecting facts and fictions. You're the captain on this bridge. Have fun exploring the movies, charts, and photographs on your journey through space. There's a lot to see and know. Click an object to learn more. Check your screens often, because what you see is likely to change. Remember, this is just the beginning of your journey. There's a whole world to explore in the encyclopedia. We're off. Engage hyperdrive. The era of space exploration began in 1957, when the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik, into Earth orbit. The Soviets also were the first to launch a manned spacecraft when Yuri Gagarin made one orbit around the Earth in 1961. While the Russians concerned themselves with the task of orbiting the Earth, America pressed ahead with the Apollo program, focusing on President John F. Kennedy's goal of placing a man on the moon before the end of the 1960s. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Lift off on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. The goal was reached on July 20th, 1969. After completing several orbits of the moon, the space module Eagle touched down. Neil Armstrong announced the feat to an estimated 625 million apprehensive viewers around the world. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. United States astronaut Armstrong became the first person to set foot on the moon. That's one small step for man.
The large heavenly bodies in our solar system that revolve in orbits around the sun are called planets. Mercury is the planet closest to the sun. Venus is next. Earth, the third planet, appears to be the only planet that supports life. The remaining planets in order from the sun are Mars, often called the red planet, Jupiter, which is larger than all the other planets combined, and Saturn, known for its rings. Uranus comes next, followed by Neptune and tiny Pluto. The elliptical path of the moon around the Earth intersects the elliptical path of the Earth around the sun twice every lunar month. The intersecting points are called lunar nodes. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and sun at a lunar node. The moon blocks the sun's rays and the moon appears black with a halo around it. A lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes behind the Earth at a lunar node. The Earth casts a shadow on the moon. Good day, mate. Ah, nature. Beautiful and powerful. Wild and free. You know, my philosophy is that when a person has no control over nature, nature runs wild and free. But there are times when a person can feel just as wild and free as nature. Ready for an adventure? Click an object. Then click again for another adventure. As you explore, think about our relationship to nature. How do we use the forces of nature? And when are we overwhelmed by them?
Grizzly bears are large, powerful animals with a reputation for fierceness. They're found mainly in Alaska and Canada. They feed on berries, grasses, and fish and small animals. Grizzlies are expert salmon fishers. Some plunge into the water and grab the fish in their jaws, while others wait quietly, ready to grab it with their paw. By the early 1400s, the Inca of Peru created an empire that stretched roughly 3,000 miles through the Andes Mountains of South America. To grow crops in the steep, rugged terrain, they cut into the slopes to create terraces. They were also master builders who could fit stones securely together without cement or mortar. To rule their vast empire, the Inca developed an efficient system of communication. Teams of runners relayed messages along mountain paths, covering hundreds of miles a day. They carried quipus, slender ropes with knotted colored strings representing information too detailed to memorize. At its height in the late 1400s, the Inca Empire was the largest unified territory in the Americas. The remains of the walled city of Machu Picchu in Peru stand today as a testimony to the glory of its past. The process known as plate tectonics occurs during continental drift. This example shows two large segments of continental crust colliding very slowly over millions of years. One land mass is forced underneath the other. To relieve the stress, mountain ranges are often formed in the overriding land mass, while earthquake-prone zones are formed below. Rebel forces under the leadership of Laurent Kabila took control of Zaire in May 1997, forcing dictator Mobutu Sese Seko to flee the country after 32 years in power. As the last soldiers faithful to Mobutu relented, gleeful and sometimes angry mobs filled the streets of the capital city of Kinshasa. This man was accused of being a soldier for the displaced dictator. His fate was unknown. Rebel leader Kabila has changed the name of Zaire to the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is hoped that Kabila, a longtime revolutionary with a cloudy past, will bring stability and openness to this troubled part of Africa.